Okay, on this video I will be uh, showing you guys how do I prepare like motherboards for extreme cooling. Some of my very old videos they aren't very good uh, like quality wise so I thought like why not redo some of these uh, guide videos as some of you even asked me to show you how do I prepare like motherboards or graphics cards for LN2. You can still find my very old videos but this one will be surely better. So uh, I thought about showing you guys how do I prepare like these latest motherboards for extreme cooling. So in this example I will be using the EVGA Z590 Dark. This has never seen any form of like sub-zero cooling but I thought about trying it tonight on LN2. So uh, I have an 11900KF CPU already installed in the CPU socket. Before you start doing anything make sure the bottom side of the CPU is properly cleaned. When you see like use CPUs a lot you can often see that many of the CPUs have a lot of like fingerprints or even dirt on the golden contact pads of the bottom side of the CPU. I always clean those first before I start doing anything. Nowadays insulation is a lot easier as we have the Inferno backplate for both CPUs and there should be one already listed for GPUs or if not then it should be coming out very very soon. But uh, when using like the uh, Inferno backplate for motherboard or even the uh, Elm or hot plate which does the same thing pretty much we don't have to insulate that much like before so nowadays if you use some kind of heat source on the back side of the board we only need to insulate the uh, closest areas to the CPU socket with something like Vaseline or artistic eraser or plastic dip or similar we don't have to remove the whole heatsink assembly and go through the areas around the MOSFETs and so on Obviously they will uh, stay at relatively cool temperatures even on LN2 but they will not see any temperatures like 0 or minus 5 or minus 10. When I run these CPUs on LN2 the VRM temperatures usually go to like plus 15 but even at that temperature level there's no, there's no condensation issues pretty much. The hardest part is that if you don't use like a heat source at the back side of the board if the VRMs get to like minus 10, minus 15, if you stay at idle for long periods of time and then you apply some heavy like load on the CPU like R20 at very high voltage and clock speed, the VRMs start to heat up and the possible ice around the MOSFETs starts to melt and that causes a lot of very like uh, immediate moisture issues. It could cause well hardware damage in the worst case but usually just some uh, instability issues. The hardest parts where you can actually see permanent damage is definitely the VRM. So if VRM gets short circuit you could kill the CPU. So uh, generally we see some uh, like uh, water at the memory slots or somewhere over these parts over here especially the memory slots are very common. We only see some instability issues. We don't get like permanent damage. So the way I do this is I still use Vaseline. I use Vaseline then I use uh, like closed cell foam insulation just like on the container and just paper towels. You can use the standard Scotch shop towels. I just happen to have this uh, shop heavy duty shop towels at hand so I will be using these as uh, to demonstrate for you guys. But uh, you can use any form of like paper towels but I really like the uh, blue shop towels because they are very absorbent and once they dry out you can reuse the same uh, paper towels over and over again. So it's much better than something like your regular shop towels or paper or for the toilet paper towels. I'm just saying. But now as I'm going to be using the uh, Inferno backplate I will start the insulation from the back side of the board. So I'll just flip the board over like this and we will insulate, we will put some Vaseline on the areas that are directly around the CPU socket on the back side of the board. So that means this area over here we don't have to exceed like this area. Nowadays when many boards have SMD memory slots the whole process is a lot easier because if you want to clean the board afterwards the uh, all of these through hole parts or components on the board especially uh, PCI Express slots and memory slots they are very annoying to clean. The easiest way to get something like that cleaned is to use like ultrasonic cleaner. That's definitely the easiest way to get these parts cleaned so you can easily get all of any form of like grease from the very tiny spots on the board. But let's get started. So I'll take some uh, like regular 
Vaseline and just apply it around the back side of the board. Now just be aware especially on these darks there's a small like hole at the, at the center of the back side of the socket so do not put too much Vaseline on this part because when you push the Inferno backplate it can push a lot of the Vaseline into the socket and you don't want that so do not put too much Vaseline on this part and you don't really don't have to because there's not that many components on the back side. It doesn't matter at all if we have water on top of the PCB itself with, mo with uh, solder mask on that doesn't matter at all. We just we just don't want water doing a short circuit any on any of the components. So we don't want water to connect any of the uh, components to ground. So that's the only reason of doing this. So let's just put like over here. To try to do this uh, relatively quickly for you guys. And now when going on the back side of the CPU socket, we only put like a little bit, not too much, because we don't want too much grease to be pushed into the CPU socket itself. And okay, so now the back side is pretty much covered, all of the main areas I mean. So uh, you can, if you want to risk it, you could even just run the whole board with only the uh, Inferno backplate, but that's quite risky. Even Kimpin recommends some form of insulation directly around the uh, CPU socket area. So now what we'll do is I will just put the Inferno backplate like this way around. These are the correct holes for the mainstream socket. Hold on, so we have over here, over here, this one over here, and this one over here. Sometimes it's a little bit hard to find the information on the correct holes. Mainstream socket is the most hardest one. The big sockets like 1366, 2011, 2066, they are very easy because they are the most outer ones. So let's put over here, LJ1200 is pretty much the same thing as 11.5x. So let's put those in the holes and then we just lift the board up like so. Now I want something. Especially if you, when you start to mount the container, I recommend you put something on this part of the board at the uh, PCI Express part so that it stays re relatively even. So when you put the pot on top of the CPU, it doesn't start to move like all over the place. So you can use whatever you wish, like paper towel or just something so that it stays in place. So now we will do the same thing at the like directly around the CPU socket area. Try to avoid putting uh, Vaseline in the memory slots at this pace. So uh, we just cover the main areas around the uh, CPU socket. Now one like handy thing to do is to use heat gun or hot air soldering station to melt the Vaseline around the uh, component so that the Vaseline liquefies and go goes into the very tiny spots on the board. But I'm not fully sure, like, is it really necessary in uh, with this particular, uh, like, board and in this particular situation. With graphics cards, like, 2080 Ti, 3090 Kimpin, I always do that way. So I apply one layer of Vaseline, I heat it up, I heat it up, like, all over, so I see the Vaseline has liquefied on the whole surface, and then I swipe it, like, briefly again with more Vaseline. And that's generally a very good way of doing it. Now I'll just pause the camera and show you the uh, next steps so that the whole video doesn't become too long. Okay, so you can use a heat gun like this. Yeah, very easy. Now the uh, coating looks pretty all right, so uh, let's add the next phases of insulation. Okay, so uh, once board is covered in Vaseline, I like to use some uh, like material around the CPU socket that prevents any like moisture from forming up. If you really get it airtight, even after a long session, when you remove the CPU pot, the whole area like around the CPU socket is actually dry. There's no water. It might be cold, but there's no water. So uh, now what I will do is I will add some closed cell foam insulation like, well, Armoflex is very popular and known option or brand. So I just have to push the insulation through these. It's actually a new piece I, which I tried to cut to size. Don't know how well it went, so let's try this. 
just to give you a rough idea, it doesn't have to be perfect for this case. You want something that really covers all of the spots around the CPU socket area. It always takes a little bit of practice, but I made, made this piece in a quite a rush. Nowadays, I often don't even try to create like a single piece thingy. I just cut pieces of Armaflex foam like this and just fill in the areas step by step. It doesn't have to be a single piece which you just put around the CPU socket like this, but that would be the best case in any ways. So you can just take like uh, pieces of Armaflex like this and hold on, I'll show you and just add them in the overall insulation like step by step. Just takes a little bit of time, but I'm, you will get it just fine in the end, trust me. Like, like so. And okay, so now you can see the whole socket area has been filled with the closed cell foam insulation. So it doesn't matter at all. You can just fill it like uh, with small pieces of the Armaflex, like uh, insulation foam, can be any other brand as well. But of course, single piece pattern would be like the best option because there are technically like very tiny air gaps between the uh, pieces of the Armaflex insulation foam. Now, uh, I still add like one layer of insulation between the uh, before mounting the pot. So uh, I put some like uh, paper towels around the CPU itself. So if there's some, if some uh, like water droplets occur, they will be absorbed into the paper towels and they will not drop on the motherboard like between the small components and so on. Now this phase also depends on your pot design. If you use T-Rex, which is a very large like flat base, Pot, you shouldn't use any more like insulation foam after this phase. If you use some old design container like F1 Dark on some old platform, you can add like uh, the paper towels after this and then one piece of Armaflex insulation foam around the CPU again with the center, with the CPU area being cut out. But as the T-Rex base is so large, you only you want, you can't put anything around here that will sit higher than the CPU itself. So I also like to apply the thermal paste before putting the paper towels. So, uh, but of course that's all up to you. Now uh, just use some high performance thermal paste. I use either Kimping Cooling KPX or the pink Cryonaut Extreme from Thermal Grizzly. So now the next phase is to get the pot mounted. So I will just put these like paper towels around the CPU like like so. Yeah, looks pretty neat if you ask me. And now let's get the pot mounted. As the CPU socket is rotated 90 degrees on these darks, just make sure how you align the container. So I like to do it like this way around with the probe on the PC Express slot side of the uh, pot. And this is the, the, this is the reason where I when I told in the container video to cut out some, some of the insulation foam. So the rods, as you can see, they are very close to the uh, pot itself. So if you purchase, let's say a T-Rex, you should, and if you use this type of insulation around the container, just make sure you take off some of the uh, insulation from the uh, rod spots. And now hold on actually. Here is the top part of the uh, T-Rex container. It has also been insulated the very same way as the container. So uh, first, a layer of electrical tape around the uh, aluminium part and then one layer of the three millimeters thick closed cell foam insulation tape from Armaflex. So let's just put this on. Mainstream Intel mounting holes. Okay, so that's pretty much it. So the pot's mounted. So I think it looks quite neat or what do you think? So the last part of the whole uh, like CPU pot mounting and insulation process is to add one layer of paper towel around the container. So because when you bench these for long periods of time, for even like a few hours, the uh, extension or the hold down thingy will get covered in ice and snow, obviously. And when you uh, sometimes have to heat up and so on, the uh, snow can start dripping onto the uh, motherboard and on the components. So there's, it's very wise to add one like layer of like protection around the container itself to catch most of the dripping ice and snow. So hold on a bit. Okay, so that's pretty much how it looks like. So uh, I wrapped 
the uh, Scott shop towels around the container with some duct tape and these two rubber bands. So it, so it actually sits there quite nicely, I think. So the main risk is only in the uh, like the edges of the aluminum extension. So if there's some snow, snow is the more likely issue. Ice doesn't really drip off easily, but snow, if you get like large packs of snow and you accidentally hit it, you will get some snow like snowfall on your motherboard but usually it doesn't cause that big of an issue at least if you have insulated the motherboard like PCP area underneath the extension area well. Now uh, this method is exactly the same if you wish to use something like dry ice. With dry ice you don't necessarily need the Inferno backplate because dry ice is only minus 78, minus 79 at best so uh, that temperature range doesn't really need the Inferno backplate, in my opinion. You are just good to go if you use some fans that blow some uh, air around the socket area. But uh, yeah, I really recommend you try some form of extreme cooling at least once in your overclocking career, if you can call it that. So if you have been overclocking for long periods of time on air, water, maybe some chilled water and so on, I really recommend you try at least something like dry ice once in your lifetime. Dry ice is usually quite easy to get because it's used by consumers. LN2 is not so easy to get in some parts of the world. You can definitely try something like dry ice. So you can get pretty much the same experience with dry ice in many situations. With dry ice, the key is to use a container where there's no risk of leaking. So uh, I think the T-Rex should be just fine for dry ice. So uh, when you use dry ice, you need to put some layer between the dry ice particles and the container, so either acetone or something like isopropanol alcohol that doesn't freeze before the maximum temperature of dry ice, which is minus 79 or so. Pure alcohol freezes at minus 114, so that's good enough, and the same thing goes for acetone. But with some containers, the gap between the copper part of the container and the aluminum extension can leak, so be aware of that. And with dry ice, the key is to have the smallest possible uh, particle size. So uh, usually when I, when I use dry ice myself at the start of my overclocking, like extreme overclocking attempts, I always got them in one kilogram blocks. So like in huge blocks. So uh, you should like throw the block in some plastic bag, hit it with a hammer against some wooden piece so that you can make the dry ice more like snow. So very small particle size. Then just pour it from the back onto some cup and from that from the cup you can add it into the container and if you have extremely tiny if you have extremely tiny particle size like snow dry ice can actually pull down faster at ambient temperatures than ln2 so be aware of that but yeah so uh, now i will be testing the z590 dark with the 1100 kf on LN2, so wish me luck. I really hope the CPU could do at least something, but it's obviously quite a hard thing to do, but uh, will be interesting to see. So uh, if you found this video helpful, if you like that I show you my preparation steps on how, how do I prepare for LN2 and so on, then please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. And yeah, thanks for watching one of my videos once again, and I will see you on the next one.